Greetings, printing enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is Tgaw 3D, and hello again. I know it's been a while. So this episode, I thought I would title, "What in the world is Vicki up to?" So, um, too long did not read, or too long did not watch. I've been busy, really busy. So first off, the Printed Solid show was a huge blast. I had a fabulous time and my son got to meet Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd. If you haven't done this already, go hippity hop over to Joel's channel and go ahead and watch his coverage of the event. He even did an interview with me and he answered the burning question of what does TGAW stand for? Next up is my big craft show that is behind me now, and it was a success. I didn't match my money from the fall show, um, but what I didn't realize was the spring show is not as big as the fall show. All the season vendors seem to know that, and I'm a newbie, so that was something that I learned. But I was very excited and pleased with the pieces that did sell. Uh, birds and butterfly magnets uh, did quite well. Fireflies finally got some love with their glowing butts. I did pull off the bow ties. I will talk about that in a second. And a very, very special piece for me uh, found a home. And that would be my little angler fish. He's printed in Colorfab bronze fell on the outside and the inside and the teeth and the little angler Colorfab glow fell. Now I still have a single extruder machine so what I do here is I print all the glow fill pieces and then I pause the, the bronze fill as it's going and insert those glow fill pieces in. He's special to me and this was the first time I ever tried to sell him and I was so super happy that someone decided to buy him as a Father's Day gift. As you know, in my last video, I was trying to do some bow ties. I did pull off three designs before my craft show. I had a design that was based on uh, dragon scales. I also did a design based on brain coral, which I saw when I was snorkeling at the Virgin Islands many, many years ago, but it stayed in my head with me. And my favorite, the one that sold the best, is this little 3D cross hatch that I did. And yeah, I just rather like it. This is a failed print because I had a little bit of a, a filament bobble here, but I'm quite in love with it. Um, on the back, I have a little slot so it can slip over a dress button. And then uh, you can also put in a ribbon with bow tie hardware to make an adjustable neck strap. So those sold really well. I think it was my second best product over the two days. I'm really glad that I put in all the 1 a.m. nights to, to finish the designs and to do the prints. All right, commission work. Uh, I just finished up a wedding gift for a couple, a stranger, I don't know them. They're getting married in a gazebo in Sayville, New York. And I went ahead and did the modeling and did the print and that's getting shipped off and gonna go to the couple later this month. I'm working on a geocoin for a really awesome family. Uh, the, they do geocaching, which is actually a hobby that I used to do and you know, still do from time to time. They wanted a little 3D printed coin that they can leave in geocaches that represent their family. So we've already gone through the first draft of that and I think the next one will be the final one. Fun things, uh, you know, I keep running across this question on Facebook and Twitter and Reddit and the various 3D printing communities, what do you do with your empty filament spools? And with that, I actually have something that I do with the empty filament spools. Uh, I printed a really simple connector piece and I put them right in between it and I make a little shelf which I use to show off my little cork kitties. This model, I mean it's not rocket science, but I'll go ahead and put it on Thingiverse in case you have something small that you want to display um, and you can take two filament holders and put them to use. The other thing I'm super excited about is my take on the gyro cube. Um, I had someone who wanted me to print them one. There are models like this on Thingiverse and I knew what I was getting into because I can see the comments and I can see the makes and I can see the challenges that other people are having. And there are some fit challenges. You would have one model where the users were saying that some of the spheres were too loose and falling out. Um, then you would see a model that would overcompensate and people are saying that they had to shave off uh, pieces to make it fit. 
Uh, it just seemed like it didn't need to be that variable. Uh, it's going to still be a challenging print, obviously. Uh, always will be with these overhangs, but it seemed like um, I can make some changes to help improve that. Um, so I grabbed the open SCAD code and I've been doing a remix of it. I've changed the connectors completely. Um, so I, to something I think would be a little more stable and a little more reliable to print. And uh, I actually printed in place. Instead of printing everything flat and snapping them together, I actually have a little bit of supports to hold these spheres up on the bottom. Um, not much contact area for to, to show the scarring or anything like that. And yeah, print in place, which I think allows me to have more stable, uh, more robust connections. And I've been playing with the tensions and it spins, so I'm excited about that. And when I do finish this up, I'm giving this back to the community, and I will be putting this up on Thing Thingiverse. And I'm actually toying with making it a custom maker, so people can put in their own tension settings, how many spheres they want, and their sizes. And that way, they can scale things down, and the open SCAD code would handle the connections instead of worrying about like, oh, I scale it down, and now the connections are too tight. I scale it up, and now the connections are too loose. So yeah. I've been busy and I'm looking forward to showing you more details of all these projects uh, now that my craft show is behind me and I actually have time. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your patience between videos. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to me on Twitter at TGAW. You can comment down below here on YouTube and you can find me on my blog at www.tgaw.com.